Hello, my name is Dr. Rob Gettins. I'm the chair of biomedical engineering at Western New England University, and I'd like to welcome you to biomedical engineering. I'd like introducing you to BME. It's a growing field, and here are some statistics from the U.S. Department of Labor about biomedical engineering. You can see the median pay, entry-level education, which is a bachelor's of science, and number of jobs and job outlook, which is looking at a 4% growth. What can you do with a biomedical engineering degree? Let's go through it looking at some of our alumni. On the top, we have clinical research or clinical engineer. This is Shane Waltzak. He is the head clinical engineer at Mercy Hospital here in Springfield. He's an alumni and a clinical engineer is an engineer that's in charge of all the equipment in a hospital. So that includes purchasing it, training clinicians on using it, and fixing equipment. So in today's day and age, this is a massively important job. Um, next, we have the medical device industry. And this is Amanda Adenolfi. She works for the Medtronic Corporation, formerly Covidian. And she works on minimally invasive um, surgical devices in, in Connecticut. This is Rachel Bean. She works for Angio Dynamics in the Boston area, another medical device in, uh, company. Then we have the pharmaceutical industry. Regeneron is a pharmaceutical company in the Albany area. And this is Gina Marshall. Her and her husband, Ryan Donovan, they um, work at Regeneron. Next, you can go on to get a medical degree. So biomedical engineering is a pre-med degree. Um, you can become an MD, a PA, you can become a dentist or a CPO, which is a certified prosthetist orthotist. This is Ryan Turner. He is actually an MD and a PhD, and he is a neurosurgeon. And so we've done a number of projects with Ryan, actually. Sarah Baldwin is an alumni who is a CPO. So that's the Certified Prosthetist Orthotist. And with a CPO degree, you are fitting patients for our orthotic and prosthetic devices. You can also work for the federal government. Laura Daniel, she works for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in Alexandria, Virginia, working on medical devices. And then we have Eriko Yoshimoro, who works for the Food and Drug Administration, um, regulating medical devices. Lastly, you can go on to graduate school. Um, Erica Motion, she is went to graduate school, got a PhD, and now she's a math professor and also a bioinformatics researcher. So looking at the percentages, many of our students from Western New England end up in the medical device industry. So 48%, as you can see. And then looking at the top 11%, our next highest would be in the pharmaceutical industry. And then looking at others, you can see 5% government, medical professionals, 6%, academic, 9 healthcare business of some type, 7%, and then lastly, clinical engineers at 9%, which that would be tied with academic for our third highest. So where do our, our students end up worldwide? Um, you can look at this Google map that shows the location of our students any all the way across the globe in Saudi Arabia, England, Ireland. Most are in the US and you can see we've got pockets in California, Colorado, Minnesota, Texas, Florida, North Carolina. Um, but most do end up in the Northeast area. Um, in the Boston and Connecticut, New Jersey area. Also the Albany area where um, Regeneron is located. So who are our faculty um, and their specialties? Med biomaterials and medical devices, that's me. Tissue engineering, we have Davina Jaswal. Bioinstrumentation and cancer research, Tony English. 
Hands-on labs and student support, we have Lisa Murray, who is our technician, and biomechanics and clinical research, Andrea Kozala, and lastly, biomems and lab on a chip, we have Dr. Mike Rust. And now let's take a look at our labs. Hi, my name is Rob Gettens. I'm the chair of the biomedical engineering department and welcome to BME. We'll give a short tour. First off, we're gonna go in our wet laboratory. I wear protect, protection required. Come on in. So in this lab, we um, do wet experiments, um, including cell culture. So come on in and we'll just, this, this space is used um, both in laboratories that are required for undergraduate studies, but also for um, research, including um, our senior capstone design projects. The ones that some of the projects that do wet chemistry and cell culture, they do their work in here. So let's just point out some of the equipment. Over here, this is um, equipment used to clean our 3D models. Um, in the corner here, we have our water purification system and an autoclave to sterilize samples. Um, this is like general wet chemistry benches. Um, if you come over here, an analytical balance. Over here, we have a, a 3D bio printer that two students won last year, Emily Burns Child and Brennan Zolnowski, they got first place in the 2019 NEBEC conference. Um, over here we have an atomic force microscope. This microscope look, lets us look all the way down to the level of almost atoms, really molecules level. Over here, this is an example of some student work. Come over here, I'll show. So this is a tendon tissue engineering um, project where um, the students built a device that can stress tendon while it's growing. And our cell culture hood is right here. This is where students can grow cells um, and will work with cells as they're growing them. Further on, we have, this is our scanning electron microscope. So, in, with this microscope, we're able to see samples down to the order of 20,000 times magnification. Um, so pretty small, not as small as the atomic force microscope, but quite small. And this microscope is a Nikon fluorescence microscope. And so that's used heavily with cell culture work. So now we're gonna go into our biomedical engineering instrumentation lab. Um, this serves as a classroom as well as a lab space. So um, some of our biomedical engineering um, elective and required classes are in this space. Next, we're going to go from this classroom into um, one of our lab spaces. So they kind of work hand in hand. This is our biomedical engineering hospital suite. So here we have Slim Pickens. This, this room serves as a meeting space for faculty and students, as well as a work and lab space for students. So we'll just kind of go around the room. Here we have an electronics workbench that students often use if their research or design requires electronics. Here we have our ultrasound machine. Um, some Many of the projects we do work with ultrasound and other imaging techniques. Here we have Tom Brady Cardia, our mannequin. In the corner, we have um, our exercise physiology suite. Um, so we have a treadmill and as well as a um, amplifier. That's the ADI instruments. And with that, we can do a number of different labs, including um, getting VO2 max. Um, we do some work um, in conjunction with the industrial engineering department with the, this equipment. Over here, as well as over across on the other side of the room, we have two bioamplifiers. Those are used to amplify bioelectrical signals. We can do things 
like for instance ECG with that equipment. Then over here we have our Form Labs Form 3 3D printer. It uses SLA technology, so it has very fine resolution in terms of a desktop 3D printer, which is often required for our biomedical devices. Looking at our BME curriculum, we're accredited by the ABET, the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology. Um, we have nine required courses that span the field, including bioinstrumentation, biomechanics, and biomaterials. So you get a firm foundation in all of those. We have four lab courses that are required, one sophomore year, two junior, one senior. And then you have opportunities for undergraduate research. For specialization, we have a sequence of four elective classes and then two additional electives. So there are a total of six elective classes um, and you can do those in areas such as biomaterials, imaging, pre-med, prosthetics, and orthotics, et cetera. And so you get to decide that your area of specialization. Our BME senior capstone projects are team-based. Many are industry-sponsored. This is an example of a team that worked with the Medtronic Corporation on their trocar, testing their trocar devices. Mike Veronese, Veronese Brianna Novaris, and Kyle Tibbalt. Dr. Kozala does many clinically relevant projects. This one was a project for a stroke patient who had been an avid golfer prior to the stroke. And this, the project included developing a prosthetic device for him to use that allows him to now golf. We also do many global impact projects. Dr. Mike Rust actually has a global health and technology class where students go to learn about global health and technology during the spring semester. And then they do a trip to Guatemala where they survey the healthcare system in Guatemala and also do some volunteer work. Lastly, many of our students do indeed uh, continue with athletic or participate in athletics. Um, this here is Julia Sarnelli. She is currently the captain of our women's soccer team. We have a number of softball players in this picture. Um, currently juniors, we have Emily Decker, Emily Cooney, and Heather Hassler. We're disappointed that you couldn't come join us here at Western New England, um, but we'd love for you to join us this coming fall and we'd love to get your, your photo inserted here. So long.